hi guys today i'm going to show you how to master um a song professionally using isotope ozone 9. i'm going to show you how i master songs my process yeah so um let's let's get it so already loaded the song you just drag and drop into also nine and this is how the interface is you have your equalizer your maximizer and you can add um plugins here if you if you like so um we'll start with um eq first then you disable your maximizer so let's um hear how it sounds first before any eq changes So what I typically do is um in any chain of effects I use, I always go with um making subtle changes. I don't like exaggerating um um the effects or the plugins I use, especially in mixing. So um also you have to keep an eye out for the meters here and here so that um it won't turn red. It needs to stay below um the red um color yeah so let's eq first and see um how that will sound uh, there's a preset from isotope that i really like to use richness and depth what it does is, is it's an, like it pronounces the, the mid-range and gives it some shine so that, that i really love this um preset but also modify it so using this preset will modify it a little. So if you can see, I took down the low mid range a little. Yeah. I felt it was exaggerated. The boost was exaggerated. Yeah. So at this point was um a great was was a great level about um zero point eight dB. Um, I always advise my students do not over exaggerate. If I do not not even exaggerate frequencies at all, keep it as subtle as possible. That's why your mix needs to be great. When your mix is great, then you don't need to do any form of exaggerations while you're mastering. So mastering is just kind of like polishing your mix up before pushing it out to the world. So yeah, then I need to cut out a little bit of low end. So I'll just click this globe icon here and it shows me more, um, more details of the equalizer. So I'll just click on this, turn number one on, then click, um, look, yeah, flat, flat high pass yeah if you click the resonance just like it says it starts making the kick or the low end sound like it's in a box it makes it sound it increases the resonance and if you increase the brick wall it makes the um low end sharp it makes it sound very very punchy but i don't need that for this i need the low end to sound round and smooth so that's what i'm going for um the flat and I'll reduce it with my mouse wheel. You can, if you can use your mouse wheel, if you don't have a mouse wheel, you just come to your queue here and maybe type six or four, then it adjusts it for you. But I think everybody should have a mouse wheel. Or if you have a mouse wheel, you can also click this, um, these buttons around, around this. You can take it in and out and it will adjust it for you so i need something like this yeah this is fine i'll take it to about let's say um about about 40 heads is a good start you see the numbers here coming up about 40 heads is a good start so let's hear it at 40 heads and see how it sounds <laughs> Right. 
right, 40 hertz sounds good. It sounds good. Then, um, other thing I would like you to take note of is how you can play with these curves. There's the mid and there's the side, two different places. You can also do some changes in the side if you, if you like, but typically I don't really do much on the side. Uh, if I have to do anything else, maybe I might drop this a little because it's, it's, it's over exaggerated also. Just drop it a little, just drop it a little. But most times I don't do anything on the side. I focus on the mid frequencies, not the side. I'm um, sorry, I focus on the mid channels, not on the side channels per se. And you can also select how you want it to be. If you want it a stereo or if you want it mid side, if you want it left and right that you can EQ the right channel and the left channel separately. So you can do stereo, but most times I stick with mid and I, st I stick with the mid. Let's see how the stereo sound and see which is better. Let's compare with the mid. Let's do that again. Not much difference, but the mid sounds like it has a little bit more detail, especially in the low mid frequencies and the high mid frequencies. That is around, let's say, 500 hertz to like um, 800 hertz. It sounds like it has a little bit more detail there. So I'll just stick with the mid side. Yeah. But I will not advise you to EQ your left and right channel separately. You can stick with the mid side or the stereo, but do not EQ your left and right channel separately because if you come here, this is left, you come here, this is right. So just stick with your um, stereo or your mid side, but I'm going with mid side for this master. So another thing I can add again in the mastering phase is um, I can add an extra equalizer if I like to do something more unique, but I don't think I have any need for that yet. So I'll add an imager to increase the stereo balance and always put all effects before the maximizer. If not, it will start clipping. So in the, in the imager, let's see how that sounds. So you can always start, if you're a newbie to this, you can always start with um, presets, then you modify it. The presets in Isotope are really, really great. So let's say I want um, I want some more depth, multiband depth. Let's see how that sounds, but I think I may prefer the width, but let's see how depth sounds. <laughs> Let's see how it sound. You know, since the artist is trying to go for a more ambient feel with the way his vocals are and the way the theme of the song is, I'll go with wit. So to make it sound more spacious. So yeah. Then I can just these are the um different frequency bands you can um emphasize the stereo imaging for like this is if you check this is for low frequency that is this point this is for low mid this is for high mid and this is for high frequency you can see the frequency range here the low mid the low frequency is from 0 to 100 hertz um low mid is from 100 to 300 about 300 and um, about 400 to 3000 and 6000 to about um, 20k for high frequency you can also adjust the the bands it's not stuck you can because different songs have different um bands they respond to so you can click this or you can also um click the learn feature so you can listen to your track and learn the best setting let's do that and see then we'll play our song. So you see it has automatically adjusted um, our frequency for us, giving us more room in the low mid frequencies. Um, yeah, so let's um, 
modify it a little let's give it more space in the high mid by increasing this the stereo image in there and also with the high frequency just a little a little a little boost will be fine yeah then we'll leave the low mids we we'll leave the the thing with low frequencies the more mono it sounds the cleaner it comes out of the speakers so i don't need my low end or my bass to sound too stereo if not it will take up a lot of the headroom while i'm trying to boost the um the loudness you can see it's turning red here it's not got turning red again as you may have put it after the mask the maximizer to turn red so everything has to be before the maximizer the other, the other thing i typically like to add is either the vintage compressor or the exciter or even a vintage tape what they do is they add kind of like a warmth to your track and they glue it all together so um let me add a vintage tape let me add a vintage tape like i said the presets are amazing so i'll just start with the presets let me go for clean 15 and listen I like to increase my harmonics a little so I can sound more um, punchy to the ears. Increase my harmonics. Then um, increase my low end also so my low end can sound more, can cut through um, smaller speakers like um, um, Bluetooth speakers, laptop speakers, phone speakers so I can cut through a little bit more. Then um, high frequencies to make it sound crisp. So, um, something I really love about the Isotope Ozone 9 is that they added Master Rebalance. This is an amazing feature because sometimes when an artist brings a beat to a studio, you may not have the project files. So, what this Master Rebalance kind of does is it gives you a little bit of control over the um, frequency of um, the, the recorded file to... Um, master now i can reduce the vocals i can reduce the bass and i can reduce the drums let's try and reduce the vocals and see how it will sound then let's boost it and see so this can save you time instead of going back to your mixing software and trying to get the vocals to come up or come down a little so this can save you time but i like the vocals where it is i just double click and put zero and it will take it back to normal then you can the bars but you can only pick one at a time you can modify the three at once let's increase the bars and see how it sound See how the bass is more emphasized. Let's tone it down and see. See so the bass went into hiding. So then let's play with the drums and see. So the drums now we can make the drums more punchy. Let me make it more punchy. Let me leave it at let's say two dB and see. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much. I don't want to add too many things. If not, it will start destroying the um, good mix. You can also add external plugins, but Isotope plugins are amazing on its own, so I didn't see the need to add um, external plugins so um now i can come to the maximizer and turn it on and try to boost it a little and this is where a lot of people get it wrong they just think mastering is about increasing the loudness and that's it no you have to go through some corrections some modifications 
some enhancements so as to sound really pleasant you understand the master is not just a louder mix no the master is a polished mix so yeah so let's um boost it a little Let, i like using the irc um two you can go up to four but then again you know that the, the higher you go the more cpu power it consumes but my system my um, pc can handle it all but i just love the way the irc2 sounds so um we don't we listen no, yeah, you go through. Then we, we boost let's take it up to let's say minus 4 db also watch your meter no. yes so that seems loud enough then i'll take the ceiling down what this ceiling does is um it kind of has just like the name says ceiling so that audio do not peak above this minus um 0.2 db so this is kind of like the maximum output level so minus 0.2 db is the maximum output level so everything will kind of like play within that region nothing will exceed it so let's play and see and you can also learn the threshold like you can listen to your track and learn what the threshold of your track is let's go so yeah so but then again sometimes the um it's not always um correct when you use the learn so you just take it a bit like this then the character is how punchy you want um the master to sound let us reduce the character a bit it's basically how he attacks it how he releases it it's basically kind of like attack and release that's just really what this character is Yeah, so that's how to master um a, a song in isotope 9. Um the chain is equalizer, imager, vintage tape, master rebalance, and maximizer. But then again, this varies depending on depending on the song and what the artist is trying to achieve or what the producer is trying to achieve. So yeah, so this is my process in isotope 9 my process is quite different when i'm mastering in cubase or fl studio but this is my process in isotope 9. it's your boy sir classy cheers